Hi guys, I'm Hayes. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today we're going to do something advanced. We'll be doing a portrait that has light and shadow that is very harsh and I'm going to share with you my techniques on how I achieve this look. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to load my photo into Procreate and once I made it full size, I am going to change to my saturation brush and I'm going to recolor the entire photo to be another color so that is similar to how I want my final portrait to look like for example for the cheeks and the nose i'm gonna put them a little bit more red so they have more blood running through them and also in the highlight section i have to make them a little bit more saturated with more color and slightly darker also for the highlight section i'm actually doing this on another layer so that i can play around with the blending modes and get the effect that i want Once I'm happy with the result, I am going to export this photo as a JPEG and use this as my reference for sketching. And I'm going to delete all the layers since I've already saved a copy of this um, edited photo as my JPEG. Now I load my edited photo in the photo app and put it on the left side of the screen and in multitasking mode I put my Procreate on the right side of the screen and now I am sketching my portrait we're using the reference by using a tonal value block in so instead of using a pencil and sketching all the details I'm actually just blocking in the light and shadow shapes so sometimes it's easier to um, sketch this way instead of the traditional pencil sketch way once I have the rough blocking shape, I'm going to load the photo into Procreate and I'm going to pick two colors. One is the color of the shadow and one is the color of the highlight. And I'm just going to color in these two blockings for the light and shadow parts. With the correct color and the tonal blocks um, defined already, it's easier to sketch the details. I'm just going to use the sketch brush to sketch in all the details right now. Also remember that you can download all my brush pack for free, the link is in the description below. Once I have all the sketch in the position that I want to define all the modeling of the anatomy, I'm just going to resize this sketch to be the size of my canvas. And now I'm going to make a new layer above all this sketch. and putting a transparent layer between the sketch that I've already done I am going to redo the entire sketch so that I have a more accurate representation of the drawing I'm done sketching now, I'm just going to turn back the layers on and clean up the painting for a little bit for the light and shadow two tones. Now we're going to define our colour palette. So I'm just picking the shadow colour to start as my first colour and from this colour I'm just going to make a few more tones to create my colour palette. So the rule is to create the colour palette based on different colours but the exact same tonal value. If you are still unsure of this, you can watch my tutorial on colour palettes for more information. So first we're going to um, proceed to having more red tones to the right side of our original swatch. And to the left side, we are going to use the original swatch and make them more grey but still retaining the same value for all the colours. So now we're going to move from the original tone upwards towards a more orange tone gradually. Again, I cannot stress enough the importance of keeping the tonal value the same while we are making this colour palette. And now we're going to make our last colour string towards the yellow tones from the original swatch. And now from the greyest tone of all, we are going to move downwards towards even more grey tones and colder hue this time, so it's towards blue. I'm going to draw an O on the original swatch in case I forget and just to recap, this is towards red and towards up here is towards orange and then we have um, towards grey on the left side 
and to downwards it's even more bluish gray so it's a different temperature and lastly we have our yellow string at the right side so now we're finally ready to begin coloring using our original tone as the base we're going to start out by coloring the shadow parts of the face first and we're just going to do hue shifts which are color shifts without worrying about values at this moment so we are not worrying about light and dark we are just trying to get all the temperature changes correct and all the colors correct so as i've mentioned before skin can go either ways so it can go to become more red more orange more yellow or more gray so we have to be sensitive to the changes of colors and temperature here after i'm done with the color variation i'm just going to duplicate the layer into another layer and put it on multiply mode for the shadows part and then for this new layer that's on multiply mode i create a layer mask and in this layer mask i fill the entire layer with black and then now i can use white to paint on the layer mask to create my shadows also note that this new layer is on multiply mode now i've roughly done up the shadows layer and using the same process i'm going to duplicate the original layer and put it above all others putting this on an add mode for the highlights layer and following the same process, I am just going to make a layer mask for this layer as well and dumping in black first so that to cancel out the effect and I'm going to paint in the highlights using you can a also white use grey colour which will make 50% of whatever's in this layer to show up instead so the brighter the colour, the more it's going to show up so you can experiment from using grey tones up to white I'm just trying to be careful in designing the shape of the light and shadow while trying to soften the edges between both of them and getting every tone correct this time around since I'm dealing with light and dark here instead of dealing with colour and now I'm going to adjust the background colour to be another colour and I'm going to put in a light shape to simulate um, a light source so I'm just trying to keep the color a bit warm here because the light is a bit warm in the photo and I want to match that. Finally, we can begin to paint in the details. First, I'm going to merge all the layers down from light to shadow and I can slowly paint in all the details for all the features on this face. I'm just going to start by cleaning up her back here and then also um, cleaning up the edges on the shoulder. So, I'm just picking the colors from the base that I already have to fill in the colors that I want and I can also use the color palette if I want to change some colors and tones. I'm being very careful here as I'm painting the wrinkles on her neck because they can't be too dark. If they are too dark, it will make her look old and it also cannot be very desaturated or grey because that would also make it look very ashy and patchy as well. So I'm trying to keep it saturated as light as I can in the light areas and a little bit darker for the shadow areas. Now we're going to start to paint the ear and I want to keep the mid-tones and the shadow light and saturated with red to show the blood vessel showing through when it's backlit by light. It's also an effect that we call subsurface scattering. For the face, I'm cleaning up the edges using the correct colour and blending them in so that we have a clean edge to start our details painting for the features of the face. Currently, I'm on my sketch layer and I'm just turning the alpha mode on and recoloring all the sketches to be the color that I want them to be. Now I can begin to sketch the lips using my sketch brush so even though it's in hard edges, I'm just quickly blocking in all the colors that I want at the places where I want them to be. Using my new smudge brushes for my new brush pack, I'm smudging in all the details that I've drawn just now for the hard edges and softening the edges so that they are more reasonable. And now I can repeat the same process for the chin and the cupid's bow. Basically, I'm following the same process. I'm dumping in hard edges using the sketch brush, scribbling all over and then I'm softening them up using the smudge tool. 
While I'm doing this, I'm mindful about which edges to keep hard and which edges to keep soft. So I'm picking colors from what I have in the base layer and I'm also using the colors from the color palette to finish up this process. This is a freestyle approach of painting a portrait compared to my other videos. So from here on, we are just doing passes and if we see something that we want to change and then we adjust accordingly. So we don't really have like a process like previously where it's step one, two, three, and then if we just follow accordingly, we can get the result that we want. This time it's a bit more random and spontaneous. There's a lot of color picking everywhere and just trying to get everything to work together using the base colors that I already have. At this point, my goal is just to detail up everything and sketch in all the details without doing any highlights yet. In areas where light meets the dark, the slight terminator needs to be a lot more saturated to show that our skin is actually full of blood vessels. Now for the pupils, I'm using my pupil brushes from my Pro Create a Portrait Brush set and I'm just trying to dodge and get the colours to be the correct intensity because both eyes here are different values. And now I'm just going to jump right in and do all the highlights with my freestyle highlights brush from my glitter brush pack. And also I'm going to put in all the lashes details as well. So when we are doing highlights in areas of shadows, we have to be really mindful about their values because they cannot be too bright because they are still within the region of a shadow. Now I'm going to block in the hair using the flat brush from the default Procreate brush set. I'm just concerned in getting the envelope of the shape so that I can use this as a mask and paint within this area. To change this into a mask, I turn on the alpha mode and then now I can just dump in another color and from now on I can paint within this shape. Within this mask, I'm going to paint in all the mid-tones and the highlights so that we can get started with our hair shading. Once I feel that I've dumped in all the tones for the hair, I can then blend it out using my new brushes from my smudge pack. So now I can finally turn off the mask and paint outside of this mask um, for the stray strands of hair that are flowing out of the mask. Using the Freestyle Highlights brush, I'm just putting down some highlights on the bun on top of her head so that I can pick the colours from this area if I want to. I picked the colours from the bun and I'm using that as I lay down all my hair using my hairbrush from my portrait brush pack. I alternate between the hairbrush for painting in the hair and then after that I also use the smudge tool to smoothen the edges out so that it's a lot more smooth just like combing hair. Once I feel that I'm ready, I started putting on all the wispy strands of hair all around her face to give it a more feminine soft look. And then I use the strand brush to do the single strands of hair all around her face. Now 
I feel like I want to change the color of the background to pink so that it matches the skin more because I love um, having neutral pink tones everywhere in the portrait and then now I'm putting on some extra highlights for the highlight area so that it seems like her skin is glowing and I'm also softening the edges of the highlights after that is glitter time. I'm using my glitter brushes and putting in some soft glitter at areas where it should be sparkling. And then after that, I'm also using spa shots and some juicy sparkles to put down more highlights. For the background, I feel like making it look like some sun rays with some dust and sparkles going on in the um, light source. So I'm putting in some bokeh effects with the hexagon highlights brush. Now I'm using the Freestyles highlights brush and putting in little dots of highlights in certain areas of the light source and also on her face. And finally, I'm using the soft powder brush on her, the highlights of the face to give it a little bit more of texture so that the whole face doesn't seem so blended. And finally, I'm just drawing some stars and I'm going to just duplicate these stars so that it seems like there are some stars floating down the background and also casting some light on her face. guys we are done thank you so much for watching let me know what you think about this portrait and for the next tutorial it's gonna be a real easy one so look out for that one thank you so much for watching subscribe to my channel and follow me on instagram i'll see you next time bye